most welcome here to Her Majesty's Royal Palace and Fortress of Tower of London. My name is Mark. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Now, for the next five hours, I'm going to be your guide. <laughs> I'm going to take you on a tour of the tower, point out some historic buildings, and tell you stories relating to them. Stories, not necessarily the truth. I don't want any of you coming up to me later on going, oh, I think you'll find that's the Duke of Norfolk. Because I think you'll find I don't care. Our story begins way back in 1066 when William, the Duke of Normandy, now known as William the Conqueror, defeated the Anglo Saxon King Howard at the Battle of Hastings. Yeah, not quite so many of you joined in on that one. Someone very proudly shouted Waterloo yesterday. Anyone here from France? Oui, bonjour. Bienvenue. That's all I got. <laughs> William was crowned king William the first on Christmas Day of that year, but he had to continue to fight his Saxon subjects who did not take kindly to Norman domination. William was looking for somewhere to build a citadel to impress and dominate the citizens of London. He chose a site just inside the eastern city walls where once a Roman fort had stood. In 1078, he authorized the building of his first royal palace and fortress in this country. Today we refer to it as the White Tower and it's over there behind those buildings. Don't bother looking, it's behind those buildings. <laughs> Over the next 200 years, successive monarchs continued to add to the tower's defences. The inner ballium or defensive wall, containing 13 smaller towers, was constructed in around 1220. In 1280, King Edward I held a meeting with all his knights and barons, and he said, we're gonna build a wall. Uh, yeah. It's a great wall, beautiful wall. And the Scots are going to pay for it. <laughs> and he did. He built another wall with six small towers all the way to face south to defend against an attack should it come from the river. Now, another part of the tower's defence was this moat, which you're now standing in. Again, this was dug during the reign of Edward I and was considerably deeper than it is now. It was designed to make use of the tidal flow of the River Thames, but twice a day at high tide, the river would flow in and around the moat and flush it clean. Does that sound like a good idea? It didn't work. Over time, all the rubbish, raw human sewage, that's poo. Dead animals, dead tourists, Float downstream into our moat and sink to the bottom. Over time, we successfully created the largest cesspit in Europe. This situation continued for a period of 500 years. Imagine what it must have smelt like on a warm summer's day. It was the best line of defence we ever had. In 1843, it got so bad we had to well, drain it and fill it with sand and shingle to the level we're standing at now. So, as I said earlier, this was the first royal palace and fortress of its kind to be built by the Normans in this country. And over the years, it's been employed in many other ways. For example, this is still the place where we keep safe the crown jewels and royal regalia, and has been since 1303. This was the location of the Royal Mint, where all the coins of the British Empire were designed and produced until 1810. The British Empire. <laughs> God save the Queen. Right. If you come from Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Canada, Zimbabwe, quite a lot of Africa, Gibraltar, Malta, Cyprus, the Middle East, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, some parts of China, the Caribbean Islands, the Falkland Islands, the Pitcairn Islands, the Cook Islands, the Solomon Islands, the so quite a lot of islands, <laughs> including the United Kingdom and Ireland. And at some point or other, you've been part of the British Empire, and therefore I'd like you to join me in an enthusiastic and rousing huzzah! Huzzah! Very good. I'm mildly impressed. Let's hear the Americans have a go. Huzzah! Oh! Rubbish. <laughs> By the way, you don't get to say huzzah. You made your choice. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, how's that working out? <laughs> However, as we've been getting on quite well recently, I'm willing to give you guys a yee-haw. You can have a yee-haw, yeah. Let's try it again then. So everyone who's not an American, British Empire! <laughs> American! yippee yeah. That's why you'll never have an empire. 